Hello, dear Breo partners and friends. It's Pastor Wolfgang again coming to you, well, this time in my office uh, here at Christ the King Lutheran Church in Cary, North Carolina. Uh, this is one in a series of uh, video updates, and today I want to talk to you about a very special time in my life that's five years ago now when I had a chance to travel to Rome and meet with Pope Francis. Yes, I've met the Pope, <laughs> and as you would imagine, that was one of those experiences in life that you'll never forget. You all have that too. All of us have, you know, moments on the mountaintop that we remember uh, for a long time, and this was one of those. Uh, at the time, I was serving as the bishop uh, in the Delaware, Maryland Synod in Baltimore, and the Archbishop of Baltimore had invited an ecumenical delegation to travel to Rome uh, to talk to Vatican officials and to meet the Pope. Now, the background to that was actually a little sad. Uh, in 2015, perhaps you remember reading this in the news, Freddie Gray was killed in Baltimore. Um, he died in the back of a police van. Uh, they had, um, you know, put handcuffs on him and thrown him in the back of the police wagon, but hadn't uh, put seatbelts on, and so he uh, sustained a major spinal cord injury, and he died a a week later, and of course that then led to many protests. This was one of the many, many killings that we've seen of black and brown people in our country. Um, and it actually led to riots. Baltimore had two nights of rioting back in April of 2015. I happened to be the chair of the ecumenical leaders at the time, so I got to be the uh, spokesperson for the faith community dealing with what was going on in the city. Um, and that included our Roman Catholic brothers and sisters in the Diocese of Maryland. And so the Archbishop, a year later, invited us to go to Rome to talk to Vatican officials about how we as a faith community had come together at a time of crisis and had managed to be a, vo a voice for justice and a voice for peace at the same time. You might remember this was the beginning of the Black Lives Matter movement, and uh, our faith community in Baltimore was an early supporter of, of that movement, both demanding justice for Freddie Gray and for his family, and holding police and law enforcement accountable, but also at the same time urging peace in the city and standing up against the rioting that was going on. In fact, one of the most um, important images that I have from those very, very um, hectic days is the night of the rioting. It was a Monday evening, and there was a time when about 150 pastors and bishops and faith leaders came together and marched through the street arm in arm. And whenever they got to an intersection where rioting was going on, they would kneel in the middle of the street and say a prayer for peace. And you know what? The rioting would stop. <laughs> it got so that the police would actually come to them and say, please come over here, please come over there uh, and, and pray at this corner because something's going down there. And it just showed what power faith can have in the face of crisis and in the face of upheaval, but also in the face of injustice, how faith can stand up for what is right. And so that was kind of the background of our traveling to Rome. Uh, I got to see the Pope uh, during his Wednesday audience. We actually were sitting in the front row and, and watched him give his address on a, on a Wednesday afternoon to the, I know, tens of thousands of people that were gathered in um, Peter Square, and then we got to line up and shake his hand. I was giving him a um, Luther rose, which of course was the emblem of Martin Luther, and I was explaining to him what that meant and what the symbolism of the, of the Luther rose was, and uh, it's one of those memories that I will always carry with me. Uh, what was kind of fun was they had us stay at the uh, Vatican guest house, which is called Santa Marta. Uh, the residence there. It's right behind St. Peter's. It's essentially a big hotel. That's what it feels like. But famously, the Pope lives there. He's been refusing to use the opulent papal apartments in St. Peter's, and he has a little apartment there in Santa Marta. And so twice on that Wednesday afternoon, I ran into him. Uh, one time when he was coming in from the outside, and one time when I was waiting for the elevator, and he was getting off as I was getting on. And both times he was all by himself. That impressed me deeply. I thought that 
you know, the Pope would run around with a gaggle of secretaries and security and, you know, people serving him, and he was all by himself. He is every bit the humble uh, man that that we think he is. Um, he, this is a this is a very very spiritual Pope um, who has rejected a lot of the more imperial and regal aspects of the papacy and who really has given us a lot of hope for our relationship as Lutherans with our Roman Catholic siblings. Uh, you'll remember that um, a couple years ago we had the 500th anniversary, well, four years ago. Now we had the 500th anniversary of the Lutheran Reformation, right, 2017, and that really was an, an opportunity to kind of review how far we have come with the Roman Catholic Church. Uh, and I'd have to say, um, you know, we've come a long ways. I mean, the whole Reformation was about breaking with Roman Catholicism and rejecting a lot of their theology and a lot of their practices at the time. And so since then, uh, we've really made a lot of progress. For example, for more than 50 years now, 55 years I think it's been, uh, the Lutheran Church and the Roman Catholic Church have had official uh, conversations and there is a lot of agreement on a lot of things, and there's only a few things left that we don't agree on that keep us from truly being united in the way that um, Jesus wants us to be united when he prays in John, right? Where he prays that we all be one as he and the Father is one. So I wanted to share with you the, the memories I have of that visit back in 2016. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video that I found. I didn't even know there was a video of this. I just recently discovered that and I wanted to share that with you. I continue to pray for you and I ask that you would pray for me. And please pray for the Lutheran Church, pray for the Roman Catholic Church, pray for the Church of Jesus Christ, that someday we may achieve true unity. Thanks so much. God bless you.